we're here at Hollyoaks ORV Park in halfway to the middle of nowhere, Michigan, to test out the new 2021 Ford Bronco and Bronco Sport. Now, the cars are still a ways away from sale, so I won't be getting to actually pilot either of these bad boys yet, but I will be sitting shotgun as we go through a variety of paces here at the off-road park, and well, I'll let you know how it turns out. We'll cut right to the reason you're here, the big boy Bronco. It doesn't take more than a minute to find out that the Bronco definitely lives up to the nameplate. Whether it's climbing sandy hills, drifting through the dirt, or blasting across a small river, the Bronco does it all with ease. Just make sure you bring a Swiffer cloth or two because dropping the top invites a whole lot of dust in. Well, you might think that the Bronco and its trucky underpinnings would make it feel, you know, rough around the edges and not so great, but the composure here is actually pretty impressive. Yes, there is a ladder frame underneath based on the Ranger and a Dana 44 solid rear axle, but this doesn't really feel janky like a Wrangler or whatever. The ride is free of harsh vibrations and noises, even when you're digging into the rougher stuff, which should make the on-road ride pretty darn good, especially since it doesn't feel like it was sacrificed in the name of off-road capability. And it doesn't really matter if it's on the asphalt or the dirt, I can tell you with pretty much certainty that the Bronco positively scoots. My ride through Hollyoaks came by way of the optional 2.7 liter twin turbocharged V6, putting out eh, around 310 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. And not only is that enough to climb well, just about anything in conjunction with the two-speed transfer case, it also means you can engage in some serious stoplight shenanigans. Alright, now it's time for the Bronco Sport. I don't blame you here for thinking that the unibody version might be a little hamstrung in off-road situations, but you'd be pretty pleasantly surprised to find out that that is not the case. To start with, there's an optional 2-liter turbo 4 putting out 245 horsepower and 275 pound-feet, which actually makes for some pretty sprightly acceleration in the dirt. Now, of course, laying down that power in effective way is the tricky part, but Bronco's got that down pat, too. In its beefiest trim, the Bronco Sport has well, just about no problem tackling nearly anything the big boy Bronco can. It's got about between 8 and 9 inches of ground clearance and about the same amount of suspension travel, so muddy ruts, sand, Bronco Sport sails through it with ease. Low speed crawl control is pretty good for keeping things steady when you're working your way up or down a hill, and while I can't really show it to you just yet for rules that I'm not allowed to talk about, there is a front facing camera display in the infotainment system so you can actually see where the wheels are supposed to go. Just like the larger Bronco, Ford clearly paid a crap ton of attention to NVH. This thing sounds great too with that 2 liter. It's got a nice little burly kind of noise to it. It does sound good. Because the last thing you want is to be coming up this hill and you're jamming on the throttle and the last thing you hear is like some little high-pitched turbo fart can kind of whine. It's got like a good SUV kind of quality to the sound. And again, you hear almost nothing of the suspension smacking around underneath the body. Further adding to the Bronco Sport's appeal, not that it needs it, is the fact that you don't have to have it that beefy. You know, there's a whole bunch of trims on offer, and several don't prioritize off-road at all. They focus more on on-road traveling, so you can still get a sharp dress crossover, it looks a little rugged, and it's still kind of actually rugged, but you don't have to go full tilt on the chunky tires or any of that stuff. Now, in addition to doing some rides in both the Bronco and the Bronco Sport, Ford also rolled out a series of concepts showing off a number of ways the future owners can, you know, gussy up their ride, add a little customization. Ford clearly did their homework here with the 2021 Bronco and Bronco Sport because if there's one thing these owners are gonna love doing, it's slapping a bunch of shit on their cars. Thankfully, Ford's got them covered right from the factory. At launch, Ford estimates that Bronco will have almost 200 factory-backed accessories for purchase, and the Bronco Sport shouldn't be far behind at about 100. All right, let's throw some examples out here. Let's say you're a fan of fishing. The Outer Bank Fishing Guide concept has a first row soft top and this really wild concept rod holder attachment that hooks to the Bronco's trail sights and kind of makes it look like the front of a train, but made out of, you know, fishing poles. Now, a slide-out tailgate will make it easier to debone on the go, too, in the event that you just like a little gore with your fishing. The two-door Badlands concept has some prototype safari doors and a big ol' worn winch attached to a hardcore steel front bumper. Over on the Bronco Sport side, there's a trail rig concept that previews a lift kit, a whole bunch of LED lights, as is the style at the time, and even a hood decal that can serve as a landing pad for your drone. Now, if that is not nearly enough, Ford also had a couple of treats in store for us on this beautiful Bronco day. First was a ride in the Bronco R, a proper off-road racer meant for the Baja 1000, which is not exactly for the faint of heart. 
easily the best sounding Bronco of the bunch, the R takes things to a seriously different level of capability. I mean, my brain is still trying to process my sprint across Holly Oaks, and I can tell you I had a freaking riot. I was drifting through sand, making the occasional jump, careening over hills, I mean, come on. Sure, it has no bearing on the actual Bronco itself, more or less, but it's clear that Ford is committed to proving the off-road prowess of anything with the Bronco badge on it, from, you know, small to big. How's it going? Out to be even better. Oh, good. No pressure. And finally, and I mean finally this time, for vintage flavor, Ford also gave me some seat time in a former Baja champion Bronco. I'm assuming this is a safe handle to grab. It is. <laughs> this one was piloted by the legendary Rod Hall's granddaughter, Shelby, sadly no relation to our own Emmy. Since my voice is only going to get in the way of this one, I'll just let you enjoy the sound of that uncorked V8 sending me all over the dang place. Well guys, after spending some time in the Bronco, the Bronco Sport, the Race Bronco, the Accessories Bronco, this Bronco, that Bronco, 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 I can assure you that this is in fact a Bronco. Whether you're getting the unibody Bronco Sport or the body on frame Bronco itself, I cannot stop saying Bronco. Both of these cars are great. The unibody one offers a surprising amount of capability, more than I honestly thought. And of course, as you would expect, the big boy here is, well, just as much fun in the dirt as you might think. Of course, you have to wait a little while for the cars to actually show up at dealerships, but I think it'll be worth it. <laughs> <laughs>